Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today what I'd like to do is talk about how you can make a custom material with your own textures for a terrain that you've made with the Terranode tools. Um, so what I've got here is the terrain that I made in the last video, which was about the Terranode workflow, um, and I've just added a new material to it that just has a principled BSDF in it. Um, now in the Terranode assets, there are some shader nodes that will help with this. Um, there's a couple of them that sort of try to automate this by giving you all of the properties at once. Um, however, that's always kind of limited um, and will only get you so far. So instead, what I'd like to cover today is how you can use the attributes node along with the, some height mixer nodes to blend your textures um, however you want and give you a lot of flexibility, um, but hopefully in a fairly straightforward way. So let's go ahead and bring an attributes node in here and a height mixer just so we have those. And then I don't think we'll need the asset browser again. So first, if we just quickly look at the attributes node, it gives you access to a bunch of information about the terrain, such as the elevation. A lot of this comes from the attributes modifier. So for example, if I made the maximum elevation five, you'd see that the top here would clip out and become white on this tile. Anyway, so all of the gets saved as attributes on the mesh, and then we can access it from this attributes shader node. So we have access to the elevation, the steepness, which like tells us where cliffs are versus where it's flat, um, the eros erosion, if you use an erosion modifier. Anyway, all of those can be used as masks, um, which we can use to influence where different textures get drawn by the shader. And you could do that a number of different ways. Um, one of the simplest ways is to plug the attribute into like a float curve or a color ramp, and then you can mask this down to select exactly what portion of, in this case, the elevation we want. However, creating a simple mask like that often creates very straight edges on the mask that blend very softly, and that doesn't look natural. Instead, we want, you know, jagged edges and things to be rough. One of the ways that I found works best is if you use textures that have a displacement map or a height map, um, you can use that as a initial mask modified by our attribute mask, and that's what this height mixer node is for. Um, and that creates very natural edges. If you have a good height map or displacement map for your texture, that creates very natural edges um, and transitions between the textures. I went ahead and prepared some textures here ahead of time. Um, I think most of these are from Polyhaven, and I think this one I made myself for the grass. Um, and so let's go ahead and drag all of those in just so we have them. And then one thing we'll want to do here is, um, for the height map textures, we should select all of those. And it usually works better if you switch the color space to non-color. So if you hold alt and select non-color, it's, this menu is annoying. There's too many things in it. So if you select it and hit in, it switches it to non-color. And I guess I didn't change it on all of them. So we'll do that as well. Then for these textures, we want um, to fix the tiling. So the UVs by default are just based on the position and world space. So they're usually, the tiling is way too heavy. So we should connect this to a UV map which by default will select the UV map. And then we want to plug that into a scale node, vector math scale, and probably scale it to like 0.1, which will make all of the texture tiles 10 times bigger. And then we'll just connect all of these to our textures. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and organize everything a bit more. We shouldn't need to change any more settings on the textures so we can hide them which will give us a little bit more space. All right, from here, if we look at the textures, we can see that we have some mud, some grass, some rocks, and some dirt. So let's just find some places we can put those on the terrain that will make something interesting. Um, you can experiment with this, make however many different masks you want. I think the first thing we should do is um, let's take this mud and we'll go ahead and put some grass on top of it. So we'll put the mud in color A, and we'll put the height map in height A. And then we'll take our grass here and we'll put it in color B, 
and its height map in height B. Then we want to choose a mask where we want to place this, and we want to put the grass on the flat areas of the train and leave the mud on the steeper areas. So let's take our steepness. So we plug that in. Sometimes it's easier actually to delete the color B and just make it a color. It'll make it easier to see where we are selecting. And then we can just play with the numbers here. The main things we want to play with are the strength of the mask and the sharpness. So the strength essentially controls how much of the mask is added as a height to the height maps of the two textures. And then the sharpness controls how quickly that um, falls off or like if there's a soft or a hard edge to the mask, essentially. And then the offset adds or subtracts that, or slides that mask up or down in the height space, which is what we're using to blend. So then wherever um, height A is higher than height B, we'll get color A. And wherever height B is higher than height A, we'll get color uh, B. So I think something like this looks pretty good. We still get some nice uh, details on the steeper parts and the little bit in the grass as well, which will break up the tiling patterns a bit, but um, most of the flat areas will be primarily grass. So let's go ahead and plug our grass back in. See that? Now over top of that, what I think I want to do is put some of the dirt texture in the river area. So let's copy our height mixer over here and we'll take the water level attribute and we'll plug it in as the mask. And you can see that's actually backwards, so we can go ahead and just subtract that from 1 to flip it around. Or I think you can also make the strength, or the strength was negative on the other one, so we can actually just make the strength positive again, and that should be correct. So then, um, let's see, down here, this is our dirt texture. So let's go ahead and bring that up and plug it in to color B and height B. And then we want to take this height output from our first mixer and plug it into height A. And that will be the combination of the two height maps that we mixed before. But um, if we want to tweak that in some way, like for example to make the grass higher, um, we could increase the we could the, the, we could increase this tweak value, which would basically raise the elevation of all of the grass, or we could lower it, which would make all of the grass drop down in the height map, and that way you can adjust the output elevations. Usually the reason you'd want to do that is to make, um, if you had a height map that was darker, you might want to increase its brightness a little bit or raise its elevation slightly so that it's more consistent with the rest of the train. Because generally after you've blended the two height maps, you want the surface on average to be pretty flat. Anyway, if we look at our output here, we can see that we've got some of this sort of sandy texture near the water. Uh, we want to adjust that a bit though, so let's pull the offset down so it's closer to the shore. And then let's actually turn the strength down and see if we can't smooth that out even more. So I'm just playing with the offset and the strength, trying to get something that looks kind of interesting. What I was looking at just now was um, this green here. I didn't want much grass underwater, so that's why I was playing with that. However, I'm also going to put um, some rocks in next, so um, that may fix that as well. So let's make another copy of the height mixer, and this time we're going to bring in this rock texture as color B, and its height as height B, the height from our mix as height A, and then um, we're again going to use the same water level attribute as the mask, and um, that'll put some rocks under the water. Once again, we can just play with the values a little bit, try to get a result that we like. And then once we're happy with it, we can add another one, and this time I want to put some rocks on the steep parts over top of our um, on the on the cliffs. So we can again take this rock texture as color B, the we can take the height as height A and the rocks height as uh, height B. Can organize this a bit. Then we need to bring a steepness mask in here. So let's make a copy of the attributes and attach steepness to the mask. 
And then we need to see what sort of strength we want to use and sharpness. I think something like that should be about right. So let's plug our color in. Actually, it might be a little bit too much. So let's turn the strength down some, get a little bit of that mud back in. And then what I want to do is I want to um, add erosion over top of this as the dirt. So we'll make another copy of the height mixer and we'll go back over here to our dirt texture and we'll plug that into color B. We'll plug the dirt into height B and our height into height A. And once again, we can just organize this a bit. And this time for our attributes, um, we want to use the erosion here. So that is this one. We'll plug the erosion into the mask. And that will give us this result. Let's put our blue in here. And then we could also, where it's flatter, um, if we wanted to, we could remove some of that by adjusting the mask by the steepness. Um, but for this, I think I'll just leave it. So I think all I want to do is just turn the strength down a little bit so that the edges are softer. And let's see what that looks like. Maybe turn the sharpness up a little bit. I know. And if you wanted to, you could also um, decide you wanted to adjust the texture a little bit. So we could add an RGB curves or whatever you prefer to use. And we could just darken that texture a little bit. Um, really, it's just a matter of experimenting, playing with different masks and textures, and trying to make something that looks interesting. Um, once you have all of that, you just take the height map and put that into a bump node. And then for the distance, I find a value like 0.25 or 0.3 is pretty good. Plug that into the normal map. Um, if you set the distance to 1, it's a little bit harsh, I think. Um, 0 0.3, 0 0.25 seems pretty good. Then from there, you just plug the color into the base color. I don't find it adds a whole lot to have like a roughness texture that's um, mixed for the whole thing. So normally what I do is either just add sort of a global roughness texture, or um, you can take the color and like separate the color and use the lightness or something. We could put this in a float curve and just bring this up because it should be pretty rough. Um, terrain's not particularly reflective. And I find that that's usually sufficient if you're looking at this from a distance to you know give you a, an idea. Another thing you can do to sort of give the uh, illusion of wetness under the water is you could put this in a mix node and as the factor, we would want the water level. Then we could put this on a float curve. And then we can just pull back the, so 0.5 on water level should be about the shoreline. So we can pull this to about the middle and then push this up a little bit. Just make a little bit of a mask. We can use that as a factor. We can set this to multiply. And then by controlling this color, we can darken under the water. And we can have that go up the shoreline a bit. And then if you wanted to, you could have that also affect the shininess along the shoreline. You could make it uh, shinier. Anyway, of all the different ways, like I said, I made um, some other, uh, my initial attempts were to do a the mix BSDF, where all of this was sort of pre-done inside of that node group. It's kind of the same thing. There's all the attributes and they, they mix different ways. However, the number of textures and that you needed for all the different shaders to plug into this, actually on my GPU, I ran out of um, instructions for the shader. It couldn't compile. So uh, that's a limitation, I guess. And then if you use the color mixer, it just wasn't quite flexible enough for me. 
Um, if you tried to mix all of the textures manually, it got really confusing. At least if you wanted to mix, you know, the roughness and the ambient occlusion and metallic and all of that as well, it was just too many uh, textures to keep track of, really. So what I found worked best was to use this height mixer node, just mix the diffuse and then use the height map to generate a normal map for extra detail on the train. Um, and I think the results look pretty good. So anyway, I just wanted to make a video about that, showing how I made the uh, materials that come in the Terra node asset collection. And that way you can find your own textures and make your own train materials if you want to. Um, one other thing you can do is if you've added any of the materials to the scene is they all have this weird shader group called exclude uh, train tri type crop sides, which is this vertical bit that the crop makes. And if you add that at the end, it'll just turn those black, which looks better in my opinion than the stretched textures, but that's entirely optional. Um, other than that, I did want to show one other thing that's pretty cool. And that is the beginnings of an add-on for exporting things. So if we go back to my uh, train folder here, we can actually just delete these since we're done with them. Um, then if you select a terrain tile and run the script, you can see it working over here and it will actually bake all of those attributes that we used to make the material as well as the height map and stuff to textures for the entire set of train tiles. So that's the beginnings of being able to um, export this and use it somewhere else, um, which I think is looking promising. So. More on that in the future, I'm sure. Um, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully that was interesting and gave you some ideas about ways to make materials for the train. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.